What's up, guys? Welcome back to yet another riveting episode here on the Avion Awesome channel. And today we're going to be talking about a Thousand Trails Peace River RV Resort, located in Wachula, Florida. I'm going to be giving you the what's good and the what's not and everything in between. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. So if we zoom out, it is right off of U.S. Highway 17 South, just south of Wachula and just north of Zolfo Springs. But technically, it's in Wachula. So if we zoom out, you can kind of see here's Zolfo Springs and here's Wachula. It's kind of sitting right in the middle, right along the Peace River here. And we keep going out. And you can kind of see that you are really, really close to like Bradenton, Ellington, St. Petersburg. You're only about maybe an hour away from there. There's plenty of shopping here in this particular area as far as Winn-Dixie, grocery shopping. Uh, I'm not going to say that you're going to find any malls here. This is not the most heavily densely populated area, so you're not going to find all the conveniences, but if you need to maybe do some car repair, there are lots of mechanical shops in the area. If you need some trailer supplies, there is a tractor supply in the area. There's a Winn-Dixie. There's a Walmart just down the road here. Tractor supply is right here. Winn-Dixie is just up here. Uh, there's a few uh, fast food restaurants, Burger King and Hungry Howie's Pizza, Sonic's Drive-In, and right up here you've got Wendy's, Taco Express, Pizza Hut, and like I said, there's also a Walmart that's right up here. So you are going to find all the stuff that you would mainly need. You would probably want to come out to this particular Thousand Trails if you're looking to kind of get away from it all. If you want uh, lots of local touristy attractions, this Thousand Trails is not for you. So here I am coming from the north. I'm getting ready to pull into the place. And this is a really unique park because they have an interesting way of getting you checked in. So right after you start to pull into the joint, you go into this main office that you can see here just to my right. And once you get your registration, they're going to give you a big long spiel about how the system works. But essentially, this is how it's going to go. After you grab your registration, you're going to drive straight in this direction. You're going to type in your code right here on the keypad to your left. This bar is going to open, and they're going to instruct you to drive down not the first street, which is A, not the second street, which is B, but probably the third street, which is C, for catfish. So you're going to pull down this particular road, and they're going to make you drive all the way to the end, which is the section called P section. I'm assuming that stands for Peace River, but whatever it actually stands for, they make you go all the way to the end of this road and they make you get in that area. I guess it's kind of their overflow parking, I suppose. And you have to then take your car or your toad or a bicycle and then you have to ride around the park and kind of find an open spot that you want to occupy for your time there. Then you'll go back up to the office, you will tell them the spot that you request, you'll get on basically a lottery list, and around one or two o'clock, I can't remember which one it is, they will basically call your name, and if there are enough spots for everyone in the lottery, you'll get a sewer site. All of the spots in Peace River have electric, and water but not all of them have sewer so you basically have to sign up for a lottery and if there's too many people there it's on a first come first serve basis so if you don't get on the list maybe you end up having to wait till the next day wait till a bunch of people leave then maybe you get a sewer site after that uh, but if you don't mind not having a sewer you don't even have to worry about it most of the time I would say every single time, especially for me, uh, I had no problems getting a sewer site. As soon as I would get there, I would bring my rig straight back here, I would hop on my Segway and I would start riding around the park and I would find a site that I would want, run back over into the office real quick and I would put my name on the lottery list. I would get a site with a sewer every single time. And here at the very front of the park, the very first thing that you're going to see is the main office and camp store. Here at the main office, they've got plenty of swinging benches, so if you happen to be a people watcher, grab your drinks, come on up here, have yourself a sit, and watch the people as they roll in every day at noon. This is the backside of the main office area. You can also find the sales office if you want to upgrade your membership. And 
at the main office is where you're going to pick up your mail, and all of it is given out after 2 p.m., so don't try and stop in there and grab it any earlier than that. Directly across from the office, you're going to find kind of like the lounge area. So they've got a couple of pool tables in here, billiard tables, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they've got some nice leatherette chairs, and you can also uh, find a couple of high tops here in this room as well. Uh, they've got plenty of you know, cue sticks and racks. Um, they've also got a couple of couches. I've seen a lot of people just come in here. They're just sitting on one of these couches, maybe grabbing uh, a little TV time. I've even seen people with their laptops over here on this far table, maybe catching up on some work or checking their email so that they can be closer to the Wi-Fi signal here at the park. And they've also got uh, a few tables with some documentation for maybe like local attractions and stuff like that if you're interested. Now, just a quick note, if you need to get to the office and you happen to be in a wheelchair, they do have an access ramp up the back side of the office. Now, once you exit the office to the left and you go straight down this little walkway, this is where you're going to find one set of bath rooms and also the laundry facility. So you go right in through this door and once you go in to your left, you're going to find both the women's and men's bathroom there on the left hand side. They usually clean those between 8 and 9 a.m. every day and just here to your right, you're going to find four to six different washing machines and also four or eight different dryers. These machines will also take credit cards and they do have near field communication if you want to use your phone instead. And surprising enough, they also take quarters. No proprietary tokens at this location. Now for a little tour in the men's bathroom. This is pretty typical throughout the park, so it's not great, it's not awesome, but it's completely functional. Uh, not super duper up to date, but they do have nice little separated shower stalls uh, for when you want to go in the shower. These are not the most wheelchair accessible uh, bathrooms that I've ever seen. They're pretty cramped. Uh, the only uh, real problem I see with these is that they are ridiculously tight, so it would be kind of hard uh, to kind of get in there with a wheelchair. Now, if you travel all the way down onto the road called Falcon, you are going to find another restroom facility. And just like I said, with the restrooms uh, back up near the office, it's pretty typical of what you can expect. Uh, it's functional, it's just not very up to date. In this particular bathroom, you're going to find um, a separated toilet area. You're also going to find a urinal and you're going to have two separate shower stalls. Now, directly next door to the wash house, you're going to find the Peace River Chapel. This is also called the meeting house. I've seen several different, like, concerts, I guess you could call them. They would have, like, someone playing some music in here. I've also seen some potlucks take place in this particular room. Um, it's pretty big. It's pretty spacious. Um, it's not the largest I've ever seen, but, you know, it did house, I would say, maybe 100 people, maybe 150. I don't know. I'm not really good at judging crowd sizes, but overall, it's pretty good. Now, just to the left of the meeting slash chapel, you're going to find the rec hall. This place is kind of interesting. It seems like it's more geared toward children, but it does have a billiards table in here. It's got a couple of nice little leather couches. This back room here is where they do poker, and if I'm not mistaken, they do it every single night at 5.30 p.m. So if you're into Texas Hold'em, you're probably going to want to stop in here, grab yourself a seat at the table, and play yourself a few games. Um, they've also got like board games and puzzles and stuff like that that you can check out for the younger kids. I would say that this is actually a pretty good area if you wanted to maybe even do some of your homeschooling in here. Maybe you'd want to do, I don't know, recess or something in this particular room. The bathroom in here is, you know, standard. <laughs> you can use the restroom. There's no shower in this particular bathroom. And again, it's completely functional. Now, from the rec hall, if you hang a left and you go straight down this road, go past the dumpsters and the service area, you're going to find the quote-unquote doggy park. It's really, it's not that great. I don't know why they create these horrendous little spaces for dog owners. Uh, we're kind of looked at, uh, I don't know, I guess we're the, I mean, they got nicer facilities for everything else except for the dogs. And it's pretty much been the same way at almost every single park that I've been to. They're kind of small. They're just tucked back in the back away from everything interesting or nice to look at. So anyway, this is the dog park. All right, we're heading back toward the office here. This is the rec hall there on the left. And you're also going to notice that you're, you have a gate here at this 
exit way. This is the way that you would exit and then turn right to get out with your RV. Now if we look directly across from the main office, you're going to find your shuffleboard courts with several different picnic tables for onlookers. Um, you're also going to find the Baki ball uh, courts here on the right as well. And just to your left, you're going to find the, It's I thought it was a guard shack at first, but it's not. It's actually the library and reading room. I've never once been in this room. I couldn't tell you what's in there. But also, when you enter the park, you're going to have to enter in uh, the campground passcode each and every time in order to get the gate to raise up. But please, just be sure that when you come in, don't go to the left of the library because you will ruin your tires. They do have road spikes here on the entranceway. Now, directly off to the left of the library and the reading room is where you're going to find not only the hot tub, but the pool area. This is also directly behind the main office, which is also connected to the washroom, the laundry facilities, and those bathrooms that I showed you earlier. And just slightly backward from where the pool areas are is where you're going to find your tennis courts. And this is mainly where people played pickleball. I almost never seen anyone play tennis. Everyone seems to be all about that pickleball around here. You also have a covered pavilion. This is also where you'll have uh, the fire pit. I think every Friday night they kind of have a bonfire here around this pit and lots of get-togethers. There's generally a few pieces of free firewood if you happen to be kind of close. So if you want to do some hanging out on a Friday night, this is where it ends up happening. Now with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and take a brief little tour around the area so you can kind of get an idea of what the sites actually look like. And honestly, in this particular park, most of the park looks exactly like this. It has a very old Florida feel, lots of uh, big oak trees with lots of Spanish moss. Um, it's just really, really kind of woodsy and outdoorsy. I really like the vibe of this particular park. And to be perfectly honest, overall, most of the sites give you plenty of room to kind of spread out and not be right on top of your neighbor. I, This is probably one of my favorite parks. I'll just go ahead and say that. Now, in this particular park, there's maybe only two, three, I'll even give you up to five permanent structures. And I would say that most of them probably work there. Everyone else is a transient traveler. Um, so you're not going to have that sort of conflict between the people that live there full time and kind of resent you for just coming in and enjoying all the stuff that they've had for years and years and years. Um, so this is a super duper, you know, traveler friendly style park. And just a quick note on this whole area that's here in the back left hand corner. All of this area is basically a floodplain. Uh, it gets so much water and it's kind of bowled out here. People get stuck in here all the time. Their rigs get stuck. I've seen people, I've been, I've been in this park in particular three different times. I've seen more people try and park here because with it just being grassy, you can't really see how muddy it can get but it does and you're gonna get stuck. If it's been raining for any length of time, there's a really good chance that this whole place is just gonna to turn to absolute mush. So if you'd like to avoid that, really, really avoid this particular section. This park is also equipped with a full uh, boat ramp so that if you happen to be hauling a boat or maybe a couple of jet skis, or again, if you like to kayak, um, they have a actual real boat ramp here that you can launch your boat and that's upriver and that is downriver heading towards Pioneer Park. I'd say probably one of the downsides, at least to the main drag here in the park, is that you are in fact right next to a major uh, artery that runs through uh, the Zolfo Springs and Wachula area. So if 
road noise is kind of a bother for you. You may not want to park on this side of the park, but honestly, it doesn't bother me at all. I kind of find the uh, road noise a bit soothing, to be honest with you. This park is also equipped with some uh, meager <laughs> mini golf accommodations. Uh, I'm not going to say much about it. I think it's, uh, I don't know, a little lackluster, but I'll let you guys be the judge. I think that it could use a, uh, a bit of an upgrade if you were to ask me, though, personally. But I will say uh, that out of the uh, total of three times that I've been to this park, I've never seen anyone playing any mini golf here ever. So there's that. In my personal opinion, I think one of the top reasons uh, to come to uh, Thousand Trails Peace River is mainly because of all this nature that you actually get. On the outside perimeter of the park, you have these uh, hiking trails, these walking trails. Uh, more than enough to uh, get a good um, you know, afternoon walk in with the dogs. Uh, a, a nice place to just come and sit and hang out and relax. You've got an extremely nice view of the river in several different places all up and down along this uh, hiking trail, both on the far side of the park and this nearer side. And as with many other small areas, low-lying areas of the park, it will get a bit marshy after a rain, so you're going to have to probably avoid some of these uh, mushier parts. But overall, the uh, area is very nice. It's very calming. Uh, lots of old Florida vibe going on back here. Another great thing about uh, this particular area uh, down by the river is a lot of people like to either launch their kayaks out here. I happened to kayak down the Peace River just a few days ago. Uh, just launched myself right out there on a sandbar and uh, floated on down to uh, the Pioneer Park. It wasn't very long of a, a kayaking trip. I should have launched myself way further upriver if I wanted something um, a little longer, but nothing to say that you can't toss an anchor out there and just float, get some sun, uh, because for the most part you know that no one else is going to be out there. Another positive for the area is that the current isn't very strong so that once you get down as far as you know you are willing to go you can always just turn yourself around and with relative ease you can paddle your way right on back up to the campground. Another little fun activity that uh, I've seen a bunch of people do. I, I, I don't understand uh, why they like doing it, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, there are apparently tons and tons of shark teeth and megalodon teeth, uh, fossilized teeth that are down here in the riverbed. So a lot of people come out here with sifters and they'll kind of shift around all the sand and, and pan for shark's teeth. Uh, so, you know, it's something else to do. There are also some of these uh, huge hollows here on property. Uh, this is probably the biggest and oldest one. If you like to hammock camp, um, you know, there's absolutely nothing to say that you can't you know, grab your hammock, grab your uh, tree straps, and just come out here somewhere close to the river and set up your hammock, have a nice lazy afternoon. You can do it right over here by the river. There's plenty of trees, plenty of woodlands uh, to set that kind of stuff up. It's just an absolute amazing time if you're looking for just a little bit of solitude away from all the hustle and bustle of the rest of the park. As a side note to this uh, back hiking trail area, um, they do have signs posted to be uh, aware that uh, snakes and alligators are present. Uh, I just want to say that out of the total amount of uh, time that I've spent here, I have never seen one snake and I have only seen two alligators and they were further on down the river. I have never once seen any of those things here uh, directly on property. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for me here today. I'm going to give Thousand Trails Peace River a solid 8 out of 10 rivets. Thanks so much for watching yet another riveting episode here on the Avion Awesome channel. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I'm going to see you guys again on the next one. Peace.